Hey guys, Matt Gibbs here from Dagger Matt Military, and I have a couple of new pieces to show you. A couple are pretty interesting, I think, anyway. So we'll start with my friend, the SAs, okay? And you know SAs are my absolute positive favorite, <clears throat> so I'm going to bring them front and forward for you guys just to take a look at. So here we have two different new SAs that came in, okay? Um... So which one's the early one? This guy here? Or this SA here? Could you tell? Well, if you've been watching my videos, you should be able to. So both these are really nice condition, but you can see the dull finish on this SA and the brighter finish on this SA. Does that mean a whole lot? Well, typically when you see this dull finish, that's typically going to tell you that that's nickel silver. This bright finish on the dagger is going to tell you that that is usually plated, okay? So when we look at this piece on this side, you can see a little plating wear up the top and a little plating wear down here. Over here, it's pretty continuous. You don't see any issues as far as like chipping or anything like that because the nickel silver really doesn't react a lot. It'll turn green sometimes and that's called vertigris. That's also corrosive. Um, a lot of dealers and collectors think, that, think it's desirable, but it will eventually destroy the metal. So here you have a nickel silver guard, nickel silver guard, nickel silver pommel nut, nickel silver fittings, untouched scabbard screws, which you're always looking for. And this one has an anodized finish, which is a type of bluing process, okay? So if you come over to this one, you have a plated guard, you have a plated guard and you have plated fittings on either scabbard fitting. And then the finish on the scabbard is paint, okay? This is original paint. You can see a little bit of crazing in the paint, but this is 100% original. The blade on this RZM SA is beautiful condition. Um, hopefully you're able to get the cross grain in that, but I mean, it's really super nice. And then the other side, just as nice, all the way down to the tip. You can see the cross graining in this. A really, really nice example. This is a condition you want to find them in. So this is RZM marked as anything post-1937 is. And the RZM code on this is M713, which is ASO, okay? Arthur Schoenhofer, okay? And you can see that right there. Really nice maker mark really nice deep um, model on it okay so we go over to <clears throat> the early SA and this is a pre 1937 SA really nice cross grain on this all the way to the tip and hopefully you can get that you got some normal runner marks in it but it's really super nice I know the photography is not the best but it's a really nice blade and hopefully you can see some of the cross grain in it and the maker mark on this is Herberts and Maurer it is a rare maker I think it's a six or seven on Mixar um, so pretty uncommon um, guards are in really nice condition both these the grips are really nice nice inset brown dills this eagle and this eagle okay are two different materials so the material on the early SA is nickel silver, of course. The material on this one, which I have an extra eagle right here, is either aluminum or zinc, okay? This is an aluminum eagle that I have. It's an extra eagle, okay? And then there's two pins on the back side, which are fed through holes in the grip, which adhere this to the grip. The SA roundel is held on with a pin. It's just stuck in, okay? So let's just take a look at the RZM scabbard. I know I didn't show that to you guys. Untouched screws, exactly what you're looking for on these. Absolutely gorgeous. Two really nice SA daggers. And then the other thing that's desirable that you're really, if you're looking for an SA, a nice SA, is you should see here a nice crisp snap when it goes into the scabbard. So I don't get yelled at by anybody. Scabbard rings always go to the right. Okay, and here's this one. 
nice fit. Guard to the upper scabbard fitting. That's something else you should be looking for. A really nice pair of SAs. So what do we have next? Uh oh, what's this? I don't think I've shown this to you guys before. This is an RAD Reichsarbeitdienst Hewer. And on the blade, which is a very heavy blade used for chopping, where these da daggers are ceremonial, this one was made to be used. A lot of times you see these sharpened because the RAD actually used them to chop wood and whatever else they use them for. On the blade is the motto, Arbeit Ident, which means work in nobles, okay? The grips on this are staghorn, untouched screws. This is a nickel silver fitting, I was at nickel silver uh, grip, um, which is early. On the other side, you have the RAD triangle, which is on all of them. The German equivalent of patent pending. And then of course, this one is Ed Wusthoff. You see the trident below uh, the Wusthoff. It's Ed Wusthoff and then it's Soligen, okay? So really, really nice. You don't see these in this condition. You just don't. This is already sold. This is going to a collector friend of mine in Georgia. He bought it off me. I sold this in about 10 seconds after getting it in. These are a little bit more expensive than SAs, especially in this condition. And then I'll just scare, share with you guys. There's the scabbard for this, nickel silver again. You have a nice pattern up the top, and then down below, you have the RAD symbol, which is a shovel and wheat leaves coming off of it because they fed the nation. And then again, the scabbard is black original paint with a little bit of crazing to it, as you can see. So really, really nice RAD. A lot of times you'll find these numbered. This particular one is not numbered, um, but I mean, it's in really nice shape. To find them in this condition is just absolutely amazing. So two really nice SAs I just got in, a really nice RAD I just got in. I have a few hangers for these daggers. This one is a plated later dagger, hanger. And this one is the considered a longer neck variety, nickel silver marked DRGM on the back by Osman. So, Couple of nice dagger hangers I got in too um, to go. Well, they don't really go with this dagger. This black leather one is more of an NSKK SS type hanger. So, a um, couple of nice daggers I got in here today, guys. Um, as always, I'll keep bringing you the awesome content. Hopefully, you enjoyed today's video. Um, hopefully, you'll keep watching these videos. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, uh, please hit it right now. Like this video if you enjoyed what you saw here. And I forgot to show you a very one important thing. So come on over one more time. So my friend, the lower scabbard fitting, lower grip fitting, okay, the lower uh, cross guard on early daggers is marked HE, okay? It's Hessen, okay? So this one should not have a group of marking on the back of it because it's a pleated fitting. Guess what? It's got a group of marking on the back. You can clearly see this is a pleated fitting. I disassembled this dagger um, because I want to make sure these cross guards are authentic and they are. They're marked PA, peel and a die on the inside. So very, 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 very uncommon to see that, but this dagger is 100% correct. Um, I wouldn't show it to you guys if I didn't think it was. So a really neat feature on this later RZM piece um, that I really haven't really seen before. So pretty neat. Guys, hit that button. And uh, there's a lot of fakers out there, guys. I have a site on Facebook called Jolly Farms um, we, we, where we sell World War II militaria. Um, we have a bunch of experts on there that authenticate everything before it gets posted or once it gets posted You know if something's a fake and I'm not an expert in that particular field like headgear Somebody let me know and there's a lot of people out there selling fakes So if you don't know what you're buying know who you're buying it from because you can get burned really easy Thanks for watching my videos guys. I'll see you next time